So the Apple Vision Pro is here, and I'm not getting one. People keep comparing this thing to the Quest 3, and there are tons of things that the Quest 3 can do that the, the Apple Vision Pro does, and probably does a bit better, and there's things that go the other way as well. But the biggest part of this is that the Apple Vision Pro costs £3,500. Like, <laughs> I don't have the money. It's not They're not selling it in the UK, so I couldn't buy it, but I couldn't buy it anyway, because I don't have that kind of money just sitting around wanting to be spent. If I wanted to buy the Apple Vision Pro to do a review on my channel, I would be spending more money than I ever have on actual things to review on my channel. <laughs> and I'm not in that place yet. But something that really sort of I thought was quite funny. <laughs> I mean, it's funny. Is it funny? I don't know. Mark Zuckerberg, you, you should all know who he is. He's come out defending the Quest 3 versus the Apple Vision Pro. And I thought it was just quite funny. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a little watch of that video. And I'm going to sort of give my thoughts as a Quest 3 user um, as he's trying to defend that headset. I love the Quest 3, by the way, just so you're aware. All right, guys. So I finally tried Apple's Vision Pro. And, you know, I have to say that before this, I expected that Quest would be the better value for most people since it's really good and it's like seven times less expensive. Uh, but after using it, <laughs> He's not on any bars. Yeah, the Quest 3 is very good, and it is very, very cheap in comparison to the Apple Vision Pro. I don't just think that Quest is the better value. I think the Quest is the better product, period. And, you know, the different companies made different design decisions for the headsets. They have different strengths. But overall, Quest is better for the vast majority of things that people use mixed reality for. Now... <sighs> Well, so just to just sort of hold the bar here, he's saying that the Quest is better for the vast majority of things that people use mixed reality for. People have only really been using mixed reality in the last year or so. And the Apple Vision Pro is bringing a whole plethora of things that the Quest 3 can't do, but because the user bases are much smaller, people are doing those things less. As more people get their hands on Apple's equipment, that will become more common. And I'm sure that the Quest 3 is going to suddenly start doing some things that the Apple Vision Pro has already started doing. My friend Kenny is actually capturing this video on Quest's high resolution mixed reality pass through right now. We're, we're just here in my living room and you, know, you can see his, his browser windows and you know, whatever. Another big thing I get, I get loads of comments asking about the pass through of the Quest 3 because some people say it's terrible, some people say it's really good. The pass through the Quest 3 is fantastic compared to the older things available. The PlayStation VR 2, which is black and white, is terrible. The Pico 4, which has no depth perception, is terrible, but it's got good colours. Um, the Quest 2, again, is grainy, horrible mess. The Quest 3 is much better, considerably better than all of those things. However, the Quest 3's pass through isn't perfect because it's running on cameras. And for example, if I turn off the cameras in here, even the quality of the camera that I'm using will decrease. Now suddenly, the camera quality that I've got in here in a slightly dimmer room doesn't look quite as good as it looked before. Mark Zuckerberg is sat there in a very highly lit room in order to get that sort of quality. So as much as, yes, you can do that if you record in a very brightly lit room, the pass through will look quite good. If you're in a dimly lit room, it doesn't look very good at all. It looks very, very grainy. What else he's got running up here? Uh, so yeah, Quest 3 does high quality pass through with big screens, uh, just like Vision Pro. But we also Another thing that Vision Pro does, which um, I would really like the Quest 3 to do, and I don't see why the Quest 3 can't do this, is you can put the screens wherever you want them to be. I think you can have up to 12 windows open, and you could have one at your desk, you could have a different one over on the other side of the room, uh, and you can place them anywhere. Whereas on the Quest, you are limited to this sort of array directly in front of you of three screens. If I could have a screen there, and a screen there, and a screen over there, I'd like that. Designed it to be great for a lot of other things. Uh, moving around, playing games, um, hanging out with friends and socializing, working out, um, and more. Quest, you know, I think is just a lot more comfortable. Um, you know, we designed it to weigh 120 grams. The Apple Vision Pro is very heavy and comfort is the biggest problem. That's, I've, I've not used it. That's what everyone keeps saying. Um, he's got a point. Quest 3 can be comfortable if, if you get straps. You gotta get like sort of third party straps. Less, which makes a really big difference on your face. Um, there's no wires that get in the way when you move around, it's a big deal. Our field of view is, is wider and I found our screen to be brighter also. Um, I also noticed that, you know, Apple's headset has this motion blur as you move around, which um, Quest is just a lot crisper. Now, Apple's screen does have a higher resolution. 
Okay, before I get onto the resolution, you mentioned a few things there. The Quest 3 will be the superior device for gaming, hands down. Um, he mentioned motion blur. If you're moving around and everything goes horrendously blurry, um, there's a little bit of that on the PlayStation VR 2 as well, but it's it's minor, and I think the Apple Vision Pro is much worse, and this result of the OLED screens and stuff like that. The Apple Vision Pro is designed for you to be stationary and all these things to be going around you. It's a work machine. You're sort of in place and you're at a desk, you're looking at things and you're not really doing a lot of moving around. The Quest 3, its strength is the fact that at its heart, a gaming device. You can do some of these work things as well. You're going to be using the Apple Vision Pro primarily to work um, and to do the sort of productivity things or to sit and watch a movie. All this sort of static entertainment that requires you to not really move your head that much. Now, Apple's screen does have a higher resolution and, and that's, that's really nice. But I was surprised... <laughs> the, the, the compliment between gritted teeth <laughs> is great by how many trade-offs they had to make to the quality of the device and the comfort and ergonomics um, and other aspects of the display and artifacts in order to get to that. Mentioning artifacts and all sorts of stuff. You get the same thing on the Quest 3, honestly. Now, there are always going to be trade-offs, the biggest thing being the massive price tag. The reason why I do not work using my Quest 3 um, isn't because I prefer using a monitor, it's because it's just not a good enough and clear enough experience to be able to do that. I can get up a Mac window on my Quest 3 and it's fairly clear, but I just find it not as intuitive. I don't, I feel like it's not clear enough. Everything's it'd just much rather look at the screen in front of me. And from what people are saying about the Apple Vision Pro, it seems to be very much the other way that actually having the Apple Vision Pro on is a much better working experience than just having your monitor in front of you. Now, obviously I have to try that, um, but the resolution difference makes a huge difference to that. When I'm playing games, the resolution is a probably actually quite minor, it's not going to be that important, but when you're reading small writing and you're doing these productivity things, the resolution is so important that it's worth trading off all of these things. Now for input, Quest supports uh, precision controllers that are great for games. Uh, both headsets support hand tracking, but you know I found ours to be a little more accurate. <laughs> Apple's eye tracking is really nice. <laughs> it's all these things where it's just like, he's like, my dad's stronger than yours. My dad would beat your dad up. <laughs> <laughs> so controllers, it's a, it's a gaming device. You're comparing two different things. Um, we, we actually had those sensors back in Quest Pro. We took them out for Quest 3, and we're going to bring them back in the future. Um, it's a nice interface. It's not perfect. So eye tracking. Eye tracking is key to the Apple Vision Pro, obviously. I love eye tracking. There's eye tracking on the PlayStation VR 2, and that's one of my favorite things about it, and it allows you to do things like foveated rendering, which the Apple Vision Pro does as well. I wish the PlayStation VR 2 made more of its eye tracking. I wish there was more games and stuff like that that use this eye tracking, because I think it's so good. It allows for so much more, but there's no sort of experiences on the PlayStation VR 2 other than the games that are normally sort of ports from other platforms as well, so you've got to be able to make these games usable without eye tracking. I wish they did more with the eye tracking on PlayStation VR 2. Apple Vision Pro can do whatever it wants because they sort of manage the entire thing. You can you can go around menus on the PlayStation VR 2 in the Horizon Call of the Mountain. In Horizon Call of the Mountain, you can navigate using eye tracking, um, but you can't navigate the PlayStation Home menu using eye tracking, which I find bizarre. I'd love it to be able to do that. Hand tracking on both of them, I imagine it's probably very similar. However, Apple Vision Pro is using the hand tracking to be able to see it in any environment, so you can see your hands and it tracks them and it maps them into the real world. Whereas on Quest, they're not doing that. What it seems to me is that these are all things that probably could be done by Meta, but they're just not doing it. They're not updating it and adding these features. Whereas Apple have just said, we'll do it and we'll make the most of it and everyone will be excited about it. For everything though, for typing or complex tasks, um, you're gonna want uh, things like hands or a keyboard or controllers or eventually a neural interface for those kind of inputs. Quest's immersive content library is a lot deeper. You know, we've been working with studios, uh, building virtual and mixed reality games and other content for a long time now. A lot of the content on Quest is very good. Um, there's probably like quite a lot of gems and there are definitely more things on the Quest than the Apple Vision Pro, um, but there's also a lot of stuff that is a bit naff. Um, if you go on YouTube VR, which is what is showing on the screen there, um, 
it's not necessarily a great experience. Uh, the quality and the bit rate just isn't high enough. Ultimately, what Apple are doing instead of that as well is that they are actually partnering with big companies like Disney. So Disney Plus on the Quest is just normal Disney Plus. Disney Plus on the Apple Vision Pro is 3D movies. Why don't we have that on the Quest? Put it on the Quest. Everyone will cheer and be amazing. Some sort of money thing, but he's not doing it. And if you want to watch YouTube or play Xbox on a big screen anywhere you go, uh, that's only available on Quest for now. That's only available in the easiest way. Um, he says for now as well, because you never know what's going to happen. Um, there are ways of getting around that on the Apple Vision Pro, because I've seen it. So, you know, when I look around, it, it seems like there are a lot of people who just assumed that Vision Pro would be higher quality because it's Apple and it costs $3,000 more. But so Vision Pro is definitely higher quality in a lot of areas. Um, and the areas that Apple are focusing on is better quality. Quest is better for different things. But, you know, honestly, I'm pretty surprised that Quest is so much better for the vast majority of things that people use these headsets for with that price differential. Now, look, I know that, you know, some fanboys get upset whenever anyone dares to, to question if Apple's going to be the leader in a new category. I'm going to get onto my reaction to this whole thing as a as a thing in a minute, but <laughs> okay. But the reality is, is that every generation of computing has an open and a closed model. And yeah, in mobile, Apple's closed model one. But it's not always that way. If you go back to the PC era, uh, Microsoft's open model was the winner. And in the Meta is more open than Apple is. I'll give you give you that, but it's not a massively open platform. It's not out open in the way that Windows is open. In this next generation, Meta is going to be the open model, and I really want to make sure that the open model wins out again. The future is not yet written, so you know I want to take a moment to just thank everyone who's been building with us for more than a decade. Um, that goes for both Quest and uh, the Ray Ban Meta glasses, which are doing way better than I even hoped that they would. He didn't have a lot of faith in those, I can, <laughs> I can see. Um, you know, as the old saying goes, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. So I'll see you all out there. That was the most unnatural. <laughs> so I'll see you all out there. <laughs> I feel like some of the points he makes are good points. Some of the points are just a little bit irrelevant. I think the main point and the only point really that's worth talking about is the price difference. Um, you have two different products that are used for two different things and there's a very small amount of crossover in the middle. One of them is primarily a gaming device, one of them is primarily a work device. Both of those do those things very well and both of them can kind of do the other thing but they don't do it very well. So my biggest thing from all of this is why has he made this video? This is such a weird thing to do. Why are you, why am I? You wouldn't see Tim Cook being like, Tim Cook reacts to the Quest 3. I feel like this is, this is such a weird, as like the owner and chair of a business to come out and do a little video comparing your device which is much cheaper and does a completely different thing to someone else's like imagine if like the owner of ford motor company came out and was like oh yeah the ford fiesta is so much cheaper and it's much smaller it can fit in smallest parking spaces whereas that lamborghini is really impractical it's like yeah, I get it, but you're, you're buying it for a different reason. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's just a weird thing to do. Um, it was really weird, very unnatural. Meta and the Quest has its own fans, and it has people who love the device. I love the device. I think it's fantastic. Um, these things should speak for themselves. You don't need to come out here defending it. Uh, there's always going to be hype around an Apple product. All this video does, it doesn't sell you more Quest headsets. It just makes people think, what are you doing? Why... Why are you trying to force this Quest 3 down my throat? I'm in, I'm in an Apple store. Go away. It's just a bit weird, isn't it? It's just a bit of a weird thing to do. That's that's my the only way I can sort of... I, d I don't know if you had people thinking, Mark, this Apple Vision Pro is, is doing absolutely fantastic. Social media is going crazy. You need to get out there and you need to release a statement. Why? You don't need to do this. You don't need to. We, we weren't. We weren't waiting to see what you would say about it. When you release your new one, we're not going to be knocking on Tim Cook's door, being like, "Have you tried the new Meta headset?" I doubt he will care. And honestly, none of us care. But who knows how this will play out? It might play out well. And you know what they say: the best way to predict the future is to invent it. I'll see you all out there. I'll see you all out there.